I'm not here to scare anyone. I'm not here to discourage you, persuade you. I'm just here to tell my story. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, hey. hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna talk about what went down in that delivery room on October 21st. Go ahead and grab you a glass of wine because you're gonna need it for this video. Y'all gonna be like, for real? Like, watching that labor and delivery video, you wouldn't think everything that happened, happened. So go ahead and get your cup of wine, cause we finna sip to this. <laughs> I'm legal, so I can drink. If you legal, get you a glass of wine for this one. So let's just jump right into it, okay? On October 20th, was it October 20th? Yeah, I think it was October 20th. And I'm just like, why am I wet? Like, I don't know, it was just leakage. Like, my water didn't really break, like, it just didn't gush out, but it was just leaking. So, like, it was like drip here, drip there. That went on for like a day and I was like, okay, what should I do? Should I go to the hospital? Should I wait it out? Whatever, whatever. And so maybe that was October 19th. October 19th, I started leaking, like just leaking. October 20th, I started leaking some more. So then my mom was like, let's call and just see what they say do they want you to come in or whatever so i called the hospital i'm like i'm leaking fluid i don't know <laughs> i'm not in pain or anything but i'm leaking so my doctor was like come on in okay me not tell you i don't have an actual doctor this whole pregnancy, I was going to different doctors because they don't they don't arrange uh, just one doctor to you, okay? So I've seen multiple different doctors this whole pregnancy. And then um, they told me like when I deliver, whoever is on call, like whoever is there that day or that night, that's who's gonna deliver you. You don't have like you can't pick who you want to deliver your baby. So what where was I at? <laughs> so they told me to come in. This October 20th, I believe. They told me to come in. So I'm walking in, as y'all seen in the video. We was walking in the hospital, whatever. And I mentioned on the elevator going up to the labor and delivery more water came out but it was like a lot like a lot of water came out this time so i was like oh my water broke because it was a lot like i didn't question it because it was a lot that came out so i'm like oh my god my water just broke on the elevator <laughs> so we check in blah blah so now at this point we're just in the um the first room they put you in where they're gonna check at that point there it was the decision if if I was gonna stay or if they were gonna send me home so um, I changed or whatever and then a midwife came in that's the midwife that was on call that night that day she came in and she checked my fluid and then um, she was like, she went and checked it and then came back and she was like, you're going to stay or whatever. So we stayed that day. So they transported me to another room, the delivery room. So we get to the delivery room, me and my family, we were happy. We were ready. Like 
we finna have a baby today that's what we thought like we were just so excited and so as time went on um i guess they were trying to see like um how much i was going to progress like how my contraction was and all that good stuff so <coughs> the same doctor was over me and my, we were explaining to her like because i had been there all day and they have never checked me for dilation they had never seen how many centimeters i was <clears throat> they were just asking me my plans and stuff so i'm like okay i've been here a long time i want to see how much i've progressed like i don't know how many centimeters i am i'm having contractions they're starting to get stronger and i'm starting to feel like i need an epidural or whatever but i wanted to see like how many centimeters i had dilated so the midwife comes in and she's like it caused an infection or whatever we don't re we don't really want to check you or whatever whatever so me and my mom like well we just want to see like we want to see like has she progressed or like we just wanted to know you know so she's making this big deal about checking me and then she just finally did it and when i tell y'all it gets real real right here it gets real this lady shoved her fist inside of me literally like i'm not even exaggerating i'm not kidding this is real talk she shoved her whole fist i felt like i literally jumped so hard i'm at the top of the bed like if that hurts like and so my mom like ma'am you need to stop like chill because you done went too far <laughs> she went too far i'm like I've had three kids and ain't no doctor ever did that to me. So that was the first incident that just changed the whole mood, the whole day, changed everything. So then after that, my mom was like, um, we want a new doctor. Like she was rude. Like we just don't want her in here. After she checked me, she was like, like I said, 0.5 centimeters like okay <laughs> like why did you have to be rude about it that's that's the whole thing like you could have easily handled it a different way and then i told every doctor i've seen this whole time that i wanted the epidural but i didn't want pitocin so <clears throat> she was making a big deal about the epidural like she didn't want to give me the epidural and stuff like that. So we just asked her out the picture. My mom was like, she told the nurse she don't want to, she don't want her in here anymore. She wanted a new doctor. So they gave me a new doctor. Oh, I gotta thank you, bro. It's so much and it's just a draining situation, honestly. But after that, they scheduled, they gave me a new doctor. And that whole night and day. I had not really progressed for real. Like, my contractions were getting bad, though. So, I end up getting the epidural. No, first, they gave me these pills. And they were like, this is going to make the contractions stronger or whatever. And it could help you dilate. So, I think they said I could take up to six pills. If I don't progress, then they were going to try something else. So I take the pills. I've been taking the pills that since I've been there. And I still, by the end of that night, I still hadn't dilated for real. Like, I probably was like um, five centimeters by the end of that night. So, <clears throat> oh, I end up getting an epidural. So I end up getting an epidural and it worked. Like, I went in the hospital at 11. So I think I ended up getting it like that night sometime. And I was feeling good. Like, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel the contractions. 
I felt good. And then like in the middle of the night, I just started feeling pain all over again. And my mom's like, you shouldn't feel pain. Like it should be subsiding. Like you should be okay. But I wasn't okay. Like I was still feeling pain. So on to the next day, everything just started turning bad. Like I gotta think about what order they did everything because I really don't remember, but I kind of remember. So the doc, the new doctor came in. She checked me, and she was so nice. She was like, "If you want me to stop, if you don't want me to go too far, you let me know." Okay. I was like thank you i got you or whatever and then she checked me and i think i probably was like six centimeters maybe i don't know i hadn't progressed for real so then they came in and they were like um we're gonna try to break your water to get the rest of the fluid out and so they did that and then like things just started getting worse like i started feeling more contractions my baby's heart rate was iffy mine was iffy our blood pressure was iffy and things were just like shaky so this the next day things were just rocky and shaky and so literally we're just waiting to see like we're just letting hours go by and they're like we're gonna check you again at such and such time so we were just waiting to see like how much i've progressed throughout the whole day and then she came in she checked me again and i jumped i like skyrocketed to like um maybe seven or eight centimeters i think eight like i just jumped i jumped like three centimeters because they had not checked me for like a period of time and so we were excited. So we're like, okay, we're getting close. And then everything just started turning. So another doctor came in and she told me, she was like, if you don't have this baby by um, 12 tonight, like by midnight, we're gonna have to do emergency C-section because you're not really, you're not progressing, you're not dilating the baby is not coming down basically so i'm i started crying because like um i don't have nothing against these sections i just didn't want to experience my first labor that way like i just wanted to have my baby i just didn't want a c-section so they're like so i'm like i'm just thinking like what i'm gonna do what can we do like just can we try something so then they gave me the peanut ball and I put it between my legs and i had to like do different positions for that they said that would help the baby come down so now we're working on how to get this baby down and so um nothing really i still was I think they checked me again. I still was at like eight centimeters. They let time go by. They let hours go past before they checked me again. So in between that time, we were just trying different stuff to make the baby come down and to like calm the, um, to calm our blood pressure and our heart rate and just like keep things steady. So like mid evening, um, they started watching the baby's blood pressure really closely because it was like just going up and down and mine was going up and down as well and so um one nurse she was like let's try um putting fluid back inside of you because the baby has no room the baby was on the cord or something happened but the baby didn't have room and it was in one position like making the um just making things rocky so they put the fluid back inside of me which helped and um what happened after that they put the fluid back in that made things steady like our with our heart rate and our blood pressure that helped to make things more steady and so now we were just waiting 
to see more progression or whatever and at this point i'm like in and out like i'm still kind of feeling pain like with the epidural like and it, it did not necessarily take my pain away that next day but the first day it did the first day i didn't feel any pain but the second day i felt pain and so they decided to um i don't know if they were boosting the epidural dosage i don't know what they were doing honestly but they told us that this will help the epidural like become stronger so they injected medicine in me in my iv through my iv and it was it would help like for like three hours and then i'll feel pain again so we're like why do i why is this epidural not working like i shouldn't feel pain i felt my legs still it was just like i don't know it wasn't working so they decided to give me a second epidural now the contractions are way stronger i'm in way much more pain so i'm freaked out i'm like i'm scared i don't know if i want another epidural because what if i move you know i just i was scared and they were like well this is our only option because if you don't get another epidural then you can't have an emergency c-section because you like they can't give me um anesthesia or something about i don't know but they were they were so adamant about like you need another epidural if it's not working so they gave me another epidural so the anesthesiologist I couldn't see her but my mom and my boyfriend were like she just looked shaky like she didn't look like she didn't look like she was comfortable with doing it and I'm nervous already so I'm just like I just wish she just hurry up and get this over with and then she stuck me and after that I really um did I feel it I really didn't feel it but then they did something else. I think they. this is where they, this is when they try to check to make sure the epidural is in the right spot. And they're like, you're going to feel like heat run through your leg. And so whatever they did, it like shocked my leg. Like I felt like a heat wave run through my leg. Like it just felt so off. It felt off. So after that, like i said before it kind of eased the pain for a couple hours and then the pain came back so now i'm still in pain and then the doctor comes in to check me and she's like you're nine centimeters so i'm happy we're all happy we're like okay it's time to push we made it it was like 11 o'clock or like 10 50 so i'm like okay great she's coming tonight i don't have to get a c-section i'm excited or whatever but i'm still in pain so it was nothing that i guess they could do at this point other than get me to push so i started pushing i literally felt every everything everything the pain the pressure i felt everything and i'm not lying my back and my lower um my lower back was hurting so bad it was just terrible like i just felt so much pain i just wanted the baby out of me like i don't want to go another second just i just wanted the baby to come out like that's how bad the pain was the pain was terrible so i'm pushing i'm pushing i felt burning i felt pressure it hurts it really hurts and i was so upset because i didn't like my plan was not to feel this much pain okay 
I was supposed to have an epidural, which means it's supposed to comfort me through my labor. And I didn't get that. That just ruined, like, that whole, my whole labor was just upsetting because I didn't get to enjoy it. I couldn't even enjoy my baby because I was in so much pain even after I had her. I was feeling pain. So I pushed her out. I had her basically natural. I had a natural birth. I did, I felt everything. So after I pushed her out, they're like, it's so much blood. They're just trying to clean the blood out. I, can, I really don't know what's going on. Like, I don't understand it. So I'm just laying there. I'm just like, please help me. I'm in pain. I'm in pain. I'm screaming. Even in the video, in my labor and delivery video, you can hear me in the back. They got the camera on the baby, but you can hear me in the back screaming, like, just in pain. You could tell. So, they come in. They're like, we're going to give you a shot of medicine. It should help the pain. They gave me a shot of medicine in my leg. And um, I still was in pain. I don't even know if it helped. Like, I just, all I remember is pain, 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 pain. So, they're cleaning all this blood that they're seeing. It's coming out. It's just so much blood. I can't remember how much blood I lost, but I know I lost a lot of blood. So, then I had to get a blood transfusion. They give me the blood transfusion. They're still pushing on my stomach, trying to get the blood out. And then they had a hard time trying to get my placenta out. They, The doctor was like she couldn't grab it or she couldn't find it. So she was still trying to find my placenta in the midst of me getting a, tra a blood transfusion. She was still trying to get this placenta out of me. So I had to end up um, pushing again to get the placenta out. And so after that... <laughs> They stopped the bleeding. I got the blood transfusion. And then now they're just now letting me hold the baby. Of course, when she first came out, they put her on me, but for like two seconds, not a long time. So now I really get to do skin to skin with her after probably like 25 minutes of all this other stuff happening i'm just now really seeing my baby holding her you know and so then they were like let's try to get you breastfeeding so i'm still getting a blood transfusion and i have to breastfeed my baby at the same time i'm super mom <laughs> at this point at this point for my first child i went through hell and that's just real. So, um, after all that, they transferred me to the recovery room. And I'm literally still in pain. Like, I cannot tell y'all how much pain I felt in my lower back. Like, on top of my bottom, I just felt so much pain. And... It was just like, it was unbearable. Like, it was so much pain. So, I'm telling them, I'm still in pain. Can I have something, something stronger to help? They only gave me Motrin and Tylenol. And not until the day before we um, got discharged, they gave me something stronger called Tramadol. So this whole recovery time that we were there, it was only for like two days, I think. I was still in pain. Like it, I couldn't, I could barely walk. I needed help to get up and walk. I could barely pick the baby up. It was just so much pain. And it was just like, nobody was hearing me. Nobody was trying to comfort me and make me feel okay. So, at this point, we're all fed up. We're all just like, we're just ready to go. We're just ready to get out this hospital. 
Like we just wanted to go. I, I know I did. I just wanted to go home and worry about the pain at home. I would I I was basically depending on my family to just comfort me when that's the doctor's job. And so after I got the trauma doll, it helped a little bit, but they wouldn't give me it again. They were saying they couldn't give me that again. So I'm like, why? Like, why can't you make your patients feel comfortable? And they really wasn't, they really weren't explaining anything to me. Like, it was just like, you had a baby. There's nothing we could do. That pain is normal. Whatever. Oh, another thing about the epidural. And the, another thing about... I told them I didn't want Pitocin. But I wanted the epidural. But after they had broke my water, they were saying like... They have to give me the Pitocin to make the contraction stronger. So they gave me the Pitocin. And that's when they came in and told me like you may have to give me emergency c-section and i'm like i've read so many stories i've heard so many stories about getting this pitocin and getting the epidural and then getting the c-section ends up being their go-to for some reason i don't know but i was like crying boohooing like i told y'all i told y'all this was gonna happen or whatever so that was another thing that happened but um overall it was terrible even after i left the hospital during my six weeks i was still in pain y'all like i'm still calling my mom called them so many times they didn't book me an appointment they're just telling us it's natural labor she had a natural labor it's normal it's just gonna have to heal everything's gonna have to heal on its own so I'm like, my mom's like, this is not normal. Like I've had three kids. I've never experienced this, whatever. And I'm like, I don't know what to expect because this is my first child. I don't know how to feel. I don't know how it's supposed to feel. All I know is I was in so much pain. I, I don't know. I just couldn't enjoy being a mom those first few weeks because I wasn't feeling good, honestly. So um recently i went to my six week checkup and another doctor i had seen this is a like i've never seen her before this is a new doctor and she tells me that my tailbone could possibly be fractured or broken but she knows for a fact that that's what's bothering me that's where the pain is coming from it's my tailbone we're like all this time I've been dealing with this and didn't even know they've never they they didn't do an x-ray on me or anything like I just didn't know what what the pain where the pain was coming from why it was coming and they didn't try to do anything to help it go away they could have easily prescribed me medicine only thing they prescribed me leaving the hospital was Motrin and I literally had to depend on that throughout these whole six weeks and I still was in pain because it did not help and even today I'm still in pain like I, I wouldn't lie about that I still feel pain and pressure in my lower back it just hasn't went away like it doesn't feel as bad as it did in the first four weeks five weeks but I can still, like, the pain is still there. It's not completely gone. I can't completely just sit down on my butt and feel comfortable. I literally have to ease down. And it's been, I'm what, like, seven, eight weeks now. So, that's really all that happened in the delivery room. Um, I feel like I could have been treated way better I feel like they could have did more to try to comfort me to try to ease my pain I just don't feel like they did enough I don't feel like they wanted to do more 
because if someone's telling you how their body is feeling how the pain is hurting and you still don't try to help or you try to help a little bit but you but not really then that's real messed up i feel like that was really all that happened in the delivery room to this day they haven't talked to me about the epidural they haven't told me why did it fail why didn't it work they didn't try to explain or get an understanding of why it didn't work like i still to my to this day i'm like i still want to know why the epidural didn't work i got two epidurals two and i still feel all the pain like the worst pain i've ever felt in my life was childbirth and that's a fact i'm not here to scare anyone i'm not here to discourage you persuade you i'm just here to tell my story tell what i experienced and spread the awareness because i don't want this i don't want what happened to me to happen to someone else like if you feel a certain way about something make sure you are heard make sure you speak up and don't let nobody run over you, no matter what. But for the most part, all of my nurses were good to me. Every nurse I had was good to me. As far as the doctors and how they handle everything, no comment. That's just what it is. I just don't feel like they did enough. Like, I shouldn't have been in so much pain up until seven, eight weeks from the day I gave birth. I shouldn't still be in pain. Other than that, I had a beautiful, healthy baby. She's wonderful. The only good part about that whole journey, that whole labor process, was her. It's the only good part about it. I still, it's it's like a nightmare to me because so much was happening at once, and it was just an experience that I didn't expect. I didn't expect to go through all that. I didn't expect to feel so much pain. It was just a lot. Like, it was a nightmare for me. But I'm grateful that we're safe and we're healthy. And what is it about the real truth about my whole labor and delivery um, video? This is just like the story behind it I know a lot of you loved it but you didn't really know what all went down you you only seen what I allowed you to see but you didn't really know the story behind it so this is my story and thank you guys for watching I hope that this helps a lot of mothers I hope that it serves a purpose because if that happens to someone else and i would have seen it before i gave birth i know it would have been a help to me for every mother that is watching this for every mother that's about to give birth for every mother that's in pregnancy right now i'm praying for you i pray that you have a healthy baby i pray that you're healthy and i just pray for every woman that goes through childbirth and has to experience that thank you guys for watching i hope that you like comment and subscribe and i hope that you enjoyed this video